it's crystal clear who the best team in Europe truly is. We don't know anything yet. Anything can happen, and that's what you want from a league, right? Fnatic are better in 2020 than they were in 2019. Fence a flash from Larson, Evander was sent back to the fountain. Let's bounce once again, all over road. 18 kills, 19 kills, and one more available. The stretching strike catches on Inspired. One, two, three, four, five! He gets it! Pentakill! And the redemption isn't gonna land. Self may comes in though and lands the hate spike. Alright, our forest flashed away from the Supreme Display of Talent, but still got damage done. Nemesis is being eaten away by the Cannon Barrage. He stays alive long enough. Alfori in the 1v2 gets the kill! I would have to say that I think OG is just Draft Kingdom. Bevan's gonna grab one, they wanna find the ball, but he just manages to walk away. Big damage from Dan Dan. The follow up, the Inferno, the snares are there. Dan Dan's looking for a victory lap as he just runs through the Excel lineup. Dan Dan, you god, what a cleanup! Misfits and Mad Lions, they have met a certain threshold that if you do give them an inch, they'll take the whole arm off. There are so many spears! The red needs to do a lot of damage though! Push the button! Manages to take down one of the cap. Kaiser and Kazi are doing so much work! This is what you want from a rookie team, right? They're starting off with a bang, and I don't think they're gonna slow down anytime soon. But Finn is in the back line, Inax almost down, that's one, that's two. Larson and Finn, it's just the rogue show here in the river. Finn gets another connection onto Lorax, I might find the third, but he flashes forward, it's a double! It's Finn, he's 20 years old, that is! I think Rogue are a top four team. You have players across the board that have the potential and the proven skill ceiling that they can punch with some of the best in the league. If you want bad news, you know where to go. Uh, if you want good news, just follow G2. Trying to put it down on Mad Lions, uh, jumping up to the back line. Cars, he's still alive, but now he's shut down. It's Caps to take him. He gets one, he gets two, and he's looking for more. Perks on the chase takes another, and G2 will wipe Mad Lions in the river. Trushan Barrage, Yankos gonna jump into the pit, he goes on stop, but he steals it! Yankos, so much weight on his shoulders. Hey there all you fine LEC fans, playoffs is a starting, and we got all the info you need right here. Ooh. Now first half Misfits, they were sort of swinging, well, they seem a bit downtrodden if you were to ask me now, but they've been building up them good good habits, kind of remind me of a cute little mongoose. See, Rogue, they can be all the teams below them. They might even get Kiana for Larson with a bit of luck. Just don't look at their last two games now. Don't you do it. Or you'd be inclined to think, well, they just plain suck. Mad, oh boy, you know they get me fired up. So many young rookies, they're just trying to achieve so much. Why just watch them? brings a tear to my eye, and also the fact that I know inevitably Humanoid's gonna die. Origin are here as well, and well, quite frankly, I know what you're thinking, but on all honesty, I've had trouble sleeping. Now don't be rude now, don't you call them free. If they run it down, if they in, we'll just call it Destiny. Local sheriff's fanatic, now they're looking to get everything back in order. Them outlaws have had a run of thing for far, far too long. And when they play their players, ooh, they're gonna leave you breathless. 
Some people say it's because their play gets a little bit reckless. Now, speaking of outlaws, them G2 boys got so bored they started swapping goddamn lanes. And this is where stuff gets really crazy, and I think someone might need to consider stopping them because that Yankos fella just killed 13 people last Saturday. Stop playing the goddamn music, Fettius. This is serious. They've been playing bar top. They're out of control. What can't they do? What won't they do? They're absolute maniacs, and somebody needs to stop them. playoff song. On the LEC Spring Playoffs Hi. We made it. <laughs> we made it. And, well, we arrived at the playoffs. Let's take a look at the standings if you missed last week and how everything ended up. G2 Esports, not the biggest surprise there. They ended the split in first place. And with that, also got to choose their opponent um, out of three and four, and they picked the Mad Lions. But before we move on, I think it's very interesting that that one, two, and three, yes, that's kind of expected. But everything below that to me was not exactly how I seen it playing out at the beginning of the split. Yeah, it felt like the uh, teams out of everyone's mouth that were going to be in that top four in that race for playoffs were teams like Rogue, like Excel, and you can see Excel being denied playoffs. Rogue's just kind of uh, barely scraping in there as they and Misfits kind of uh, stumbled at the final hurdle. And it was Mad Lions that were really the biggest surprise, I think, when people take a snapshot. If you're just tuning back into the LEC, this is a very young team uh, full of very fresh faces, and no one really expected them to surge at the very last second. Yeah, Frosk, I completely agree with you. I think that Mad has had such an interesting road because even during the regular season, we weren't talking about them being this team that was going to be contending for fourth. Just last week, we were talking about how Rogue had that fourth place spot pretty much locked in, but then they go in and they do what they have often done throughout this split, which is beat another top three team. They took down Origin as the teams around them fell. And the impressive thing about MAD is that they have been pretty consistent while also been gradually getting better throughout the course of the split. And if anyone is gonna make waves in playoffs, this is definitely one of the teams to watch. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, Mad Lions, as we see of their, some of their images there. And I think it is all the more impressive because they are those rookies, of course. I think also we often forget that Humanoid is touted as this experienced player on the lineup, but he hasn't been around for that long either. And I think they have evolved their play start throughout the spring split. A lot of praise has to go to the people behind the scenes at Mad as well as to um, why they have ended up in fourth place, snagging that spot away from Misfits and Rogue. Yeah, a uh, huge credit to uh, Mac. I know Peter Dunn came out on Twitter, because uh, obviously this was the splice lineup that was kind of left over, minus Duke, who went to Vitality, and was saying that he had to take a step away. So it was really Mac that kind of did the heavy lifting and putting this team together. So I just uh, have to echo that sentiment that to take a team that no one was really having any high expectations for, the only like ceiling that you had measure was a guy like Humanoid, and to bring them to fourth place is just like hats off. And another team that I really wanted to bring attention to was Misfits, because they sort of had a similar trajectory to what MAD had. Expectations at the very beginning of this split were that they were not going to make playoffs at all. They were going to be one of the worst teams in the LEC. There was so much criticism from the fans that... The 
th this team just, what were they thinking? How are they going to build this roster? And like, what were they thinking when it came to putting this thing together? But here they are, fighting right now in that fifth place position. And while they did seem to fall off towards the second half of the split, I think the fact that they did make it into playoffs, the amount of growth that they were able to make off the back of the influence that we saw from their coaching staff as well, I think is commendable and worthwhile uh, taking note of how much of a threat they can be in this playoffs. Absolutely. And um, maybe because of the fact that they went on that big winning streak and then dipped and didn't seem so hot, we got off that Misfits hype train. But, I say, but um, as you say correctly, when you look at their entire spring split and kind of their previous year as well, right? And the fact that they had to rebuild, I think that's great. And I'm definitely a bit more positive about Misfits than about Rogue because they already got to playoffs. They already got past round one of playoffs last year. And I'm a bit hot and cold about them this year, I have to say. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of question marks, especially in kind of the last uh, few looks that we got at the team. That said, Rogue were the team that a lot of analysts, uh, the broadcast staff, were really hyping up. We said that this is going to be the team in top four. We had heard in the offseason that they were just uh, flying through scrims um, comparatively to Misfits, where I think I kept hearing the, the line over and over, like, Misfits are way better than they have any right to be. And so it was like, okay, Misfits will probably have kind of this hot streak, and then we expect them to cool off. Um, but they just kept getting hotter and hotter. And I think a lot of that has to do with a guy like Febovin and his individual performance versus kind of the collective team strength that we've seen from Rogue and their development over the course of the split. That's a good point. And as always, the playoffs can reset everything because uh, more often than not, crazy things happen when we get into those best of fives. Now, some important things that we have to touch on first up is championship points. Um, if you haven't heard that the system um, about awarding championship points has been revamped, you now get awarded points for your placements at the end of the spring playoffs and at the end of the summer regular season. And then your points will decide your seeding going into the summer playoffs. But on top of that, spring split is even more important. Um, I think you may be muted, Indiana, so I don't know if we're going to solve that, but I'm going to take off your point from there. Uh, if you were not for the people at home, then we have the information twice, but that never hurts. Basically, the top three teams from summer represent the LEC at Worlds 2020, so there's no longer a regional qualifier, which means that if you don't get any points now in spring, as Excel didn't because they didn't get into those playoffs, uh, it will be harder for them to get the, those points and get a better seeding going into those summer playoffs, and thus, we're world's qualification that is down the line there is a lot of new information and you can read more about the format at lec.gg slash format however this increases the stakes for the spring split as we have said and as we embark upon the spring playoffs we asked you all at home to vote on twitter and tell us how you thought this first week of matches would play out um i'm not surprised that g2 and Fnatic were picked as winners by the people on twitter maybe a bit more by misfits <laughs> yeah i think that um I will say that I think G2 are obviously heavy favorites for the first half of the, or our first day rather of playoffs. But I think that many fans just immediately put Fnatic as the clear favorites against Origin just because of how they have looked in recent weeks. But I want to remind people of spring of last year when Fnatic and Origin went up against each other in that best of five. Origin is a very good team at planning and prepping, especially in these very long series. So I think it's going to be much closer than fans anticipate. While I do still think Fnatic are the favorites, I think that it's a little bit closer than I think what the fans are currently expecting it to be. Yeah, what? I was you on the fan hype train, I gotta say, but yeah. Fnatic and Origin will be close? Thaddeus, we're gonna have to have words. <laughs> uh, I have to follow Indiana a bit there. I mean, I thought Fnatic was going to just blow out OG, but Vedius reminded me in rehearsal of the fact that we also thought that last year, and it didn't always happen. I said, the playoffs are crazy. <laughs> I just, I think that something we have to factor in whenever it comes into best of five is that they're a completely different ball game. And when it comes to evolving in a series, um, making sure that you understand how to go from next game to next game, like while there are a lot of experienced players on both 
sides. I just have a lot of confidence in Origin's ability to read the draft and read the current meta and figuring out the best picks that not only work for them, but can also try and shut down their opponents. So again, I agree with you both. I think the Fnatic are the favorites. I think that it's going to be Fnatic favorite, and I would predict a 3-1 or 3... Uh, I wouldn't say 3-0 Fnatic, but 3-1, 3-2 Fnatic. But that's not to say that Origin are completely down and out, and I think it's going to be our closest uh, series of the weekend. Yeah, 3-1, the classic cop-out prediction. We know that, but uh, that's tomorrow, though. The action will start tonight with a true David versus Goliath matchup. I think it fits really well here for the new teams as the newest team in the LEC take on our reigning champions. Every team can lose to every team, but I do think we will win our series against them. Just like I think we will win the rest of the playoffs. You know, we've done it before. We will do it again this split. I'm definitely looking forward to playing them in the best of five. I think they will have a lot of cheese picks prepared. Testing these matchups against our standard AD carry is going to be really fun. There we go then, MAD versus G2 Esports. And before we get into the nitty gritty of the matchup, um, I think it's just important to look at the pedigree of both these organizations and then especially a G2 who has been so successful for so long here in Europe. Uh, again, it's kind of like everyone's heard us say G2 multiple times, but to kind of take a step back, because I feel like we kind of gloss over it. We don't really give them their due diligence because we're so used to them winning now. G2 have 10 times as many games played as MAD. They haven't lost a single best of five in 2.5 years. And the only best of five that they lost were against the world champions. They held uh, the consecutive number for titles back to back to back to back. And if they win this 2020 spring split, they will have tied Fnatic on the total number of LEC titles held. And so that's... That's the empire that G2 have built around them versus little baby mad lions who are on their very first split, who are just like first day to school, like rocking up and getting a shot at just these uh, god tier champions before them. And I think what's really interesting about how um, mad now go up against G2 is that it's obviously going to be a one-sided battle. It's obviously going to be mad showcasing what they're even capable of against G2, but how many teams get that opportunity to have a best of five against not only one of the best teams in their league, but also one of the best teams in the world. Because of the changes to our playoffs and because of the changes to the format, we get a great opportunity where MAD, even if they lose today, it doesn't mean that their playoff run is over. So this is a great learning opportunity under the assumption that they lose. But the thing about MAD is that they have been causing surprises throughout the split. And while G2 are gods when it comes to their record, in the best of five, very rarely do they consistently look clean. They were pushed to the limit against Fnatic last year. They have been pushed to the limit multiple times before, and MAD has showcased consistently throughout this split, given the fact that they have been able to successfully take down the top three teams, that they can compete and they may be looking to surprise today. That is a, a good point, and I know we're wary of saying, well, they don't have the biggest chance in this one, and it's just hard to say that because G2 is so powerful, but I think you summarized it correctly there. They're already the biggest surprise of the Spring Split, that absolute dark horse, and there's no reason to think that they couldn't continue some of those elements into the playoffs. I think notably the way they approach those important games as they have beaten the top three in our playoffs already. It's about having that confidence, and it's almost like mad are so young and they're so fresh and new to this situation that they almost don't know that they should be afraid. You know, they haven't been beaten down by the G2s and the Fnatics uh, and, and kind of like lost all the hope, like, uh, here I go into another best of five against the dynasty of the LEC, the legacy of the LEC, the kings of the LEC. Like, they believe that they can win and then they have the footage and the tape to prove that they can already take those teams down. So it's this, this uh, new spirit uh, of a team that you probably don't usually see. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they prep today because we've seen their prep be very strong in the past. We see some really interesting things from them in terms of things like the Callista Tarek. We're going to talk a little bit more about it later today. But I think what's really interesting is the fact that 
we haven't gotten to see this iteration of this roster in best of five, right? What will they do? How will they adapt? How will they deal with the pressure? Because when we see G2 in best of fives, they progressively get faster and more aggressive as a series goes on. So that first game, I think, is going to be really important and set up a good baseline to see how MAD can stack up against G2. That is true. Um, and what is interesting also is that they, even if they don't manage to make it versus G2 Esports, they will end up in the lower bracket. So it is important for them to take this as a big opportunity to learn. And if it happens, it would be absolutely fantastic. And I think rightfully so if they have their first game and they're able to put on a good showing, which we know they can because a lot of the pillars of why they have done so well the spring split so far is because of their smart drafting, their good preparation and their people behind the scenes. So uh, at the helm of this and who is actually part of a lot of that success is their coach Mac and he joined Laura for a pregame interview. I am joined with Mac today from Mad Lions to talk about the playoff game. Thank you very much for joining me. All good, all good. Um, I mean, you came into this split with this rookie lineup as a head coach. Now looking forward to playoffs. What can we expect from Mad Lions that we didn't see yet? Expect that we didn't see yet. Ooh, mm -hmm. um, hopefully we will see more of what we saw in the game against Origin, where we were really proactive and really aggressive and really decisive. It's something we've been working on a lot in the past two or three weeks like we've done a lot of studying other teams and the way they do things in the early game and a lot of focusing on that and trying to bring out the kind of decisiveness and the aggressiveness in our players which i think they all naturally have um but i think they needed to be taught how to channel it a bit more make it a bit more precise or accurate shall we say or coordinated <laughs> however you want to phrase that so yeah hopefully that's something that we can show on stage again this would come in handy as you will be facing g2 and we often say that coming against g2 if you come in scared you already lost. I think that's something you would agree with here. So how do you put your players in combat mode mindset against G2? I don't think it's necessarily anything special going up against G2. I mean, uh, we already went through that. Like we played them first game of the season. It's four of our players first game in the LEC and we played G2. And actually we had a pretty good early game that game. That was one of our best early games. I, think. I don't think it's too different from going up against any other team, aside from the fact that obviously G2 has uh, like a lot of unique picks but they're not without their weaknesses either. Honestly, I think when you play against a team that has uniqueness in terms of their champion pool, obviously you have Caps who like doesn't play some of the meta champions and also plays a lot of off-meta champions, a lot of mages and weird stuff like that. And even Nikki has been pulling out a lot of like off-meta stuff like the Bard. And yeah, they have a like distinct champion pool to other teams. I mean, I think you just focus on yourself and what you know that you're good at. So that's what we'll be doing for the most part. How would you define G2's weaknesses knowing all that? You mentioned, I mean, you mentioned the fact that the early game may have been uh, one of your weakness here. And you told me that you've been working on this maybe by uh, syncing up the players a bit more. So how do you strike to take down G2 here? I don't think it's it's one thing in specific. Like obviously you want to understand the way that they operate as a team, but really it's more about emphasizing the strengths that we have a team rather than necessarily attacking G2. Although I do think that like their bot lane hasn't had the best time this year. We'll see if that changes in playoffs because, you know, maybe Caps is bored of playing uh, too many ADCs now and wants to switch up and play lots mm -hmm. of mages. So maybe there'll be a lot of spicy picks in this series. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything like hugely specific that you need to attack against G2. I think we can just go and play our game. And then as long as we get through early, we're more than happy to fight them in the mid game. All right. Well, then outside of the game, you came in this year as a new head coach with this new lineup. Are you proud about the success of Mad Lion so far? Yeah, I'm really proud of the way all of our players have grown. I think all of them have overcome a lot of like unique and different challenges, you know, inside of the game, outside of the game, like all kinds of things you know we do a lot of extra stuff at mad lines like we do loads of extra gym and nutrition and health stuff we mm -hmm. make them do all kinds of extra things outside of the game team building and meditation and a lot of those have been like big challenges and put the players outside of their comfort zone i think they've dealt with them super super well honestly i think compared to other teams i've been on in the past i feel a lot less stressed and the atmosphere feels a lot more positive than it has in the past so i'm really happy with the way things are going so far and I really hope we can see that transforms during the game later today. Thank you very much, Mike, for your insights and good luck about the game versus G2. Thanks very much. And back to you guys. Thank you much. And back to you guys. Thank you very much indeed. A tall order for Coach Mac, but I think the proof is in the pudding as to what they've already shown this spring split. And he summarizes it perfectly. Don't go in scared because then you've already lost. 
I really liked hearing from him say that he was just going to play to his own team's strength. It's not about trying to pick apart the holes in G2 while he does think their bot lane has had a bit of a shaky split. I think the approach is strong. and I think it ties in a lot with what Frost has been saying, which is that these guys don't know the fear. They don't know what it's like to play against this G2 team in a best of five so they can just give it their all and do everything they've been doing for the rest of this split. It's really your only option, too, as well, when you go against G2. I think so many teams take the wrong uh, approach into it, where they you know, try to find a very specific strategy against the team that they're facing, like around a pick or around a side of the map. And if you are going to pick a side of the map, Mac already said bot side, which I do agree with him there. But it's like, just prioritize what you're good at. Like, G2 are going to get whatever they want, no matter what, and they're probably going to be good at it. So just make sure that you show up and play your game on the day. That's a good point, and that's a good focus. I think we do need to touch on kind of for people who maybe have not been spending um, or have been paying that much attention to intrinsically how G2 has evolved. They are different this year. They seem incredibly strong, and Caps is in the bot lane and Perks is in the mid lane, but it doesn't seem to hamper them until now. I think what's really impressive about G2 is how they've actually gotten better this split. At the beginning of the split, it was rough. It was shaky. Everyone was trying to figure out their new roles. Everyone was still trying to figure out their synergy together. But now they are early game monsters. Caps is not dying as much. Yankos and Perks are working fluidly. And Wonder, he stopped playing supports top lane. He has gone back to his old carry dominant top lane ways while Mickey is helping roam around the map and work with Yankos to help dominate this early game. And just look at some of these stats. They are first across the board. They spend the vast majority of their game sitting with a the lead. They average a 2.2k gold lead at 15 minutes. This team is monstrous right now and you have to be afraid when playing against this team in a best of five. They're playing so well that they're actually uh, ruining some of our stats categories because they're just so far off the charts, especially in damage and how they win their games, and that's absolutely crazy. Um, they are favorites. I think we don't have to say that again, but in the end, I heard you mention the bot lane. For instance, Mickey did say in PGL last week that he thought that they would have quite some trouble with the Mad Lions bot lane. How important is that bottom lane going to be in this best of five? I don't think it's just trouble with the Mad Lions bot lane, but it's just kind of bot lane in general. If you're going to pick a, a point of attack for G2, it has been the bot lane. It was that way when it was Perks and Mickey. It was also that way when it's Caps and Mickey because they like to play to win the lane, to kill their opponent, and that does leave them exposed. And when you have someone like Karzi and Kaiser, they will step to and they will play kill-oriented bot lanes like the Tarek and the Callista that they can pull out. So if anyone can step to and really try to punish G2 when they get over aggressive in the bot lane, when they try to, to style on their opponents, Mad Lions certainly have the tools. And I think that the Mad Lions bot lane have also showcased they're willing to bring out new stuff. We mentioned it earlier, but they were the bot lane that played the Callista Tarek, a bot lane that was new to the European ecosystem, or meta system rather, and it really shaked heads and it also got a huge upset win against G2. So they also played the Set and Syndra last week. So I'm excited to see what this duo is ready to bring out. These two rookies have been making waves in the bot lane, and I think that they can pose a pretty strong challenge to G2's duo a definite possible X factor in this best of five. As we get closer to the draft, we're just a couple of minutes away. Uh, I want to touch on that bottom lane of that Kalista Tarek. We, of course, saw it in week five when Mad Lions were able to beat G2 Esports. And as we take a look at this draft, I want to hear from you why this worked so well, why they were able to win that game, and what they have to replicate to win three games today. I mean, if you go back and watch the tape, that early game was horrific for the Mad Lions. It Do was that. really <laughs> bad. It was like repeated dives. Yankos made early ganks on bot lane, then Wonder outplayed the top lane dive, and it was really just a single team fight that uh, G2 flipped and then ate the wrong end of a Tarek ultimate, and then it rotated into a Baron. Like, obviously, Humanoid getting really fed on LeBlanc, LeBlanc helps, which is really what I want to put a magnifying glass on. Humanoid on LeBlanc and Shadow on Lee Sin. These are by far their two biggest comfort champions, and I think they're going to have massive targets on them coming into this ban phase. Do G2 roll the dice, give uh, Humanoid and Shadow kind of their big comfort champions, or will they repeatedly deny, especially Shadow, his Lee Sin, which is above and beyond just his most proficient champion and see what else they can kind of dig into to try to stay on even footing with our best players in the league pound for pound across the board. That's a great observation, the fact that they're going to have to have good plans, but they have a certain amount of champions that G2 can easily ban out, whilst when the shoe is on the other foot for Mad Lions, what are they going to do against the flexibility of G2 Esports, which seemingly has taken on even more extreme forms and, and more flexibility compared to last year? 
Yeah, it, it's funny that you mentioned that, Ifia, because when we look back at last week and they were playing things like Bard Top, Shivana Jungle, like, yes, they are troll picks in one sense, but at the same time, Aatrox Swain bot lane, would we really be surprised if Caps and Mickey played that bot lane? I feel like that this team is always experimenting and you know they're going to have something in their back pocket ready. The ultimate question is, can Mad push them enough to force them to bring their pocket picks out? Or are they going to hold them for later in the tournament? I'm excited to see. Fantastic. There are so many questions that are going to get answered. How strong is G2 really? How are they going to start at defending their title these playoffs? And does MAD have enough of an X factor and a dark horse factor to make it through this gruesome best of five? What a start to the playoffs. This is the moment we have all been waiting for as the reigning champions kick the playoffs off against the new superstars of the LEC. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else. My name is Trevor Quickshot Henry, and I'm joined by Jacob Yamato Cannon Mebdi. Uh, it's LEC playoffs, and it is the defending champions going up against one of the more exciting rookie teams. Yamato, this should be a lot of fun. They absolutely will, Yamato. Sorry to cut you off. I believe we're just getting your audio connected to the stream. There's a chance that beautiful monologue may need to be repeated, my friend. Uh, apologies about the technical challenges, everybody at home. As you've noticed, we have moved a few of the casters around and we've added webcams to the stream. And obviously we are continuing to iterate on our setup. We will be jumping into draft in just a moment or two. It is G2 Esports on the blue side with Mad Lions on the red side. So Yamato, let's try that again. I know uh, it was beautiful the first time. It was a serenade. Maybe we'll get to it in game. Let's turn into the picks. Uh, what do we want to focus on? As it turns out, my friend Yamato, you may actually be disconnected entirely for now. So while our producers are going to be chatting to you to resolve connecting you to the stream, I'll keep our viewers entertained. And one thing I want to keep an eye out is the Callista Tarek combination. Uh, for anybody that remembers in week five, Mad Lions took down G2 Esports. They fell behind early, and it was Callista and Tarek that absolutely dominated in the mid game. The team fights were impeccable, and I wonder if G2 is going to remove that, or if they're going to stare down the barrel and say, We dare you to play it? Come at us, Mad Lions. All right, LeBlanc is the first ban, taking it away from Humanoid. Pantheon, the immediate reply. We are playing on patch 10.6, as you can see at the top of your screen. So I'm wondering where the likes of um, Orn are going to fall. Uh, Kiana is another uh, pick for Humanoid with the LeBlanc first ban. I wonder if uh, Kiana will find her way through. And there is that Tarek. So at least one half of the combination has been removed from the pool. I'm going to keep uh, focusing on some of the storylines that we want to follow throughout this series. Reminder that the LEC playoff format is different in 2020, that whoever wins today is guaranteed a top three place in the spring split. Senna is going to be the next ban coming from Mad Lions that is definitely targeted at um, uh, Caps in the bottom lane, of course. We heard Mac talking a little bit about the unique picks, talking about expectations uh, on the Mad Lions side and whether or not uh, whether or not that will come to fruition, what is Caps going to play? We know he can play those mages in the bottom lane. And I wonder if it's going to happen during the course of the B05. If you are just joining us, Yamato Cannon is currently working with my production team to get reconnected. And the last two bands is going to be the Renekton and the Thresh. So Orn manages to slide his way through the band pool. I want to see if it's going to be picked uh, or not. I mean, some of the other priority picks that we have been seeing the likes of that set still remains very, very popular. And it's going to be the Syndra locked in for G2 Esports. Whether that's in Perks' hands or Cap's hands, that's what I'm going to see. That's what I'm going to It's going to be interesting throughout the course of this series. 
whether or not perks and caps will be swapping champions, whether or not they'll actually be uh, maybe even, you know, uh, playing one another's roles. Uh, this is Caps' first playoff series as a bot laner, and he may be staring down a Callista Nautilus combination. Of course, taking a look through the rest of the draft right now, G2 Esports have to decide what do they want to prioritize, what do they want to lock in here to potentially either match the bottom lane or secure a priority pick one of their other lanes. It is the set secured, so they've locked that one in. One of those options that we've seen um, in a couple different roles, actually. I'd be very excited to see that set uh, move around. We've seen the top, we've seen it mid. I've heard a lot of people talk about it in support as well, but um, you know, with G2, you've got two flex picks straight out of the gate. And that was, of course, one of the big question marks that Mad Lions have to answer. Are they ready for what G2 can throw at them? Mac was saying he's gonna focus on his own gameplay and his own team's performance. And that is what they're hoping to do. Reminder the Mad Lions as well are one of the only teams, other than G2 Esports, that managed to pick up a win against Fnatic, G2, and Origin. But picking up a victory in a best of one versus taking a series against the back-to-back -back defending champions and a world finalist G2 that is a whole beast entirely different. While we continue to work on Yamato Cannon's microphone, I'm going to welcome Andrew Vedius Day for joining me at the caster desk. From laggiest to Vedius, what do you make of the draft so far? <laughs> well, uh, let's have a look. What have we got here? So we've got um, the Syndra plus the set priority, I think is super fascinating because um, Syndra has been a champion that over recent patches, some teams have actually chosen to move away from in terms of the priority bans. But given that G2 is so proficient at being able to flex into multiple roles, it is still a very strong flex pick for this team. Of course, it does give Mad a lot of priority champions in the form of Callista, something that they brought out against G2 last time, but with the Tarek banned away, they're forced to change their support pick in the form of the Nautilus. So, Mad already have a very strong 2 versus 2 and with a good early game impact jungler, it does suggest that Mad might be looking to attack that bot side of the map. Okay, very interesting. I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that plays out, of course, because it was Kazi and Kaiser that, again, they're, they're sort of the standout players. Kaiser in particular, especially with his uh, end of split performance, was one of the names that was thrown around for Rookie of the Split. I want to see what Shadow's going to do on this Gragas when I was preparing this series with Yamato Cannon. We talked uh, extensively about the Lee Sin versus Gragas and like who would get what. I love the fact that Lee Sin was taken away from Shadow. It's also one of Yankus's favorite picks as well. When you speak to Grabs, he's always complaining about the fact that whenever Lee is open, Yankus always suggests it. Always going, hey, maybe we could lock in Lee here. Maybe we could go for this. And the last time he played it against Origin, he was terrifying on it. He utilizes pressure so well to get into the face of his opposition to really create some chaos. Now, what you're seeing from G2's draft is a lot of early game pressure. This heavily suggests with the Lucian locked in that the Syndra could be, well, I say it could be. No, it doesn't. It doesn't suggest anything. Thing, Trevor, because it's, it's mid, G2. It's, it's Lucian mid, it could be Lucian bot, it could literally be Syndra anywhere. support, Syndra support, come on, give me Syndra support. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's not going to happen, right? But Wait. I do like the fact that Caps is going to be running the Lucian. Don't pick Maokai. Don't oh, it's going to be Maokai. It's going to be Maokai. G2, Wait, are they so really set support? Play Maokai? They're yes! Play Maokai. No! Oh, man. Oh, I'm so torn. Okay, I get set support, but yes, in do. order to get set support, I have to have Maokai top. I don't think that's a fair trade. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what does Set Lucian do into Callista Nautilus? I mean, how is this going to play out? Well, that's assuming it's Set Lucian. It could still be Syndra bot, mate. Um, that's the scary thing. I think G2 okay, will wait to see. You can't uh, put Syndra support. Oh! Oh! Leon wait, is locked in! So they're, so they're Nautilus doing Nautilus Oh my god! FPX! Yeah. They are channeling <laughs> their inner FPX! This, they're trying you are too excited for a Nautilus mid quick shot is <laughs> yes but it's it's the message it's not about oh, the pick okay, it's okay, not about it. you. the Maokai it's not about the Nautilus it is about the ghost of GO3's past <laughs> in the world okay, championship okay. final 
So the things to note here is the Lucian is going to go into the mid lane. So what does this give G2? Well, a very easy pushing mid setup. This allows Yankos to be very aggressive in the early game. And we're going to be seeing a lot of pressure from this Yankos perks duo, as we've come to expect from G2. You've also got Syndra in the bot lane, which is a big comfort pick for Caps, something that he used to be known on last year when he played a lot of mid lane for G2. And when you pair it up with the set we saw from Mad just last week when they played against Origin, how powerful this 2v2 can be. So I think G2 have drafted themselves a very early game comp. And Trevor, I'm sure when we get into the game, you're going to talk a lot about the early game stats from G2 and why this could be a very scary thing for Mad to go up against in game one. You read my notes, you cheater. Really quick, <laughs> though. What happens if Perks and Caps just walk to their other lane? And Caps it's not going to happen. With There's no way. It's not, not going to happen. happen. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump into game one. G2 versus Mad. Welcome to game one of the LEC Spring 2020 playoffs. I would like to try and welcome back Yamato Cannon to the broadcasts. Thank so Yamato, you when much. we uh, first Ooh. tried to introduce you, feel like Ric Flair, I'm ready to go, man. Monologue. I think you'll have a little bit of time. What do you expect from this series today? I'm so happy we get to cast this series as the first series of the LEC playoffs because to me this defines the whole thing. G2's level, what are they going to come in as? Always the best of fives, G2, they always level up coming into it. We look at them as the favorites, we look at them as spring split winners, naturally. What level are going to bring when Caps is playing Borom? Mad Lions, the Dark Horse, this is the team that can cause some ruckus. They can be the ones that cause some damage, maybe to Origin, maybe to Fnatic, maybe today to G2, because in the regular season, they oh, took games so off exciting. of them. You so to, this is the series to watch 100%. I know you were watching the draft while we were working on your microphone. And just to all our viewers and everybody watching at home, thank you for bearing with us. We are still iterating on this work from home LEC. And it does come with uh, more speed bumps than we would like. Um, Yamato, as we start to see the trading, give me a brief summary of um, your expectations for these two team comps and, and what you want to see the teams do. When the Maokai gets locked in into the Aatrox, we know G2's approach already from the get-go. They want to leave Oromo on the weak side and just boom into that top side. No problem at all. They want to just make sure that Caps and this Kalista, Karzi of course, they force that 2v2. They right, keep going for it. Every action is going to lead side. into that bottom side. And uh, keeping my eyes in on the junglers as well. Yankos obviously early picked that Sin. And that means uh, he's going to start to clear out. And I want to see what he's going to do against Shadow. Um, one of the, the big stories coming into this game was just the gigantic mismatch between the Leeson, uh, the Yankos rather, and Shadow, the, the abilities that they have. Shadow obviously a rookie jungler to the stage, she's had some impressive performances, and when Yamato and I were, you know, preparing and researching, we were nervous about what Shadow's level of play was going to have on the series. The expectation is that Yankos should be able to run all over him. So we'll see what happens in terms of the remainder of the series. Shadow now going to have some support from Kaiser as he starts to clear out some wards. Yankos was looking for a little bit of an invade, but nothing ended up uh, you know, coming of it. No interactions there, no challenges. And Scuttle Crab will now be picked up here on the Mad Lion side. As the lane continues to play out, it looks like it's slowly pushing towards the Mad Lions. As you can no doubt tell, Yamato Cannon is currently still working with uh, some audio related issues. We're attempting to synchronize a lot of the microphones. The producers are informing me that we were talking over one another. And that is obviously a problem for everybody listening at home. Well, let's take a look. Shadow with the first uh, appearance here. Dredge line will connect onto perks. Body Stamp Flash is available for Shadow if he wants to. Decides against the perks with the flash and the heal would have been able to escape. And they end up trading flash for flash. If Human already got that bonk on the head and rooted him in place, maybe then Shadow could have followed up for the first blood. When we were looking into this game as well, perks on 
Euphoria was talking about how excited he was going to be coming up against Humanoid. Excited to play against him because Humanoid likes to play those assassins. Um, I mentioned in the draft, the LeBlanc was banned away, the Kiana was banned away. And Perks is playing a little bit aggressive, now steps forward with the help of Yankos. Moving away, First Blood picked up by the First Blood King. Yankos cannot chase further onto Shadow. It's a one for one. It's G2 and Mad Lions trade blow for blow. It turns out, member of the broadcast team that had the worst internet is now going to be coming back to help out as uh, Vettius has been able to <laughs> catch this first kill. It's weird how the world changes, doesn't it, Yeah, it's super weird. Anyway, so um, I didn't get to see the full setup, but what I wanted to talk about was something we mentioned in draft. The fact that Yankos and Perks is a very powerful two versus two lane. Mad wanted to try and get ahead of the play, though. The thing about Mad's duo is they have a lot of crowd control, but unless they land everything, they don't have the damage. The opposite is true for G2. Because you have the Lucian in the early game, he's running the press, the attack, along with the Lee Sin, as long as he hits that Q, you have so much setup damage. So even though G2 had a health disadvantage, they're able to come up with an early kill. Though, the fact that Mad do find that trade still pretty good for them, but you can see the deficit starting to mount in the mid lane. The question is, how is Yankos now going to use this early kill and early lead that he's been able to pick up to further pressure the map? I mean, uh, if there was any jungle that was going to be able to do that, it's going to be this man. Uh, where would you like him to go? I mean, um, Yamato and, and you both talking a lot about this this bottom lane prio. Um, all flashes available, cleanse as well on Kazi. So, you know, do you want to see any pressure there? Uh, and when would you expect it to come? Well, the thing you've got to look for is a potential dive. Now, you talked about the FPX message that Mad was trying to send, uh -huh. quick shot. But there's no predator on the Nautilus, which uh, means that we're not expecting super carry humanoid rookies. this rookies. game. You know? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yes, they are rookies. That's been the whole narrative <laughs> of them for the entire split quick shot. Uh, but the thing is, I wouldn't say that it's super common on a Nautilus. It's for just a very doinby thing to do. Um, however, the Aftershock provides you with a lot of utility in terms of defensive stats, and it helps you in terms of the 1v1 against Solution, especially if you're able to land that skill shot. Um, however, in terms of setting up dives, it's really easy with the Callista once she hits level 6. We do see a bit of trading between Yankos and Shadow, and he has to be careful because Kaiser is in the vicinity. But the um, the reason dives are very possible in the bot lane is because you do have that ultimate from the Callista to reset the tower aggro. So Kaiser can be used to set up a lot of these engages and then get out of harm's way as Mickey flashes in. Yeah, he does. Manages to get through. It's three on two. That's until Humanoid arrives. Humanoid will be able to catch out Perks. The teleport comes down from Arome as well. Kaiser's looking for Yankos but can't find him. Perks will go down as the nature's grass roots multiple members of the Mad Lions. That's one for Wonder. Mickey's running for his life and Wonder may just be cut down where he stands. And Mad Lions come away with the team fight win. Mickey uh, may not be able to escape yet. No flash available. Body Slam will connect. And the kill should be donated here to Kazi, but the damage is massive! Gromp has been enlisted, it won't be enough for the kill. Four kills to two! Really good smite there coming in from Shadow onto the Gromp to keep himself alive, but look at this situation. Notice that G2 initially have the numbers advantage, which is why they commit to the play. However, the TP comes in at a really good time from the side of Mad as the Maokai is walking down. The fact that the Syndra doesn't rotate up because Mad have prior on bot lane means that Mad actually get to collapse and have the numbers advantage at the end of the fight, forcing the rest of G2 to disengage, where they end up losing three members overall. This early game that was supposed to be heavily in the favor of G2, the fact that they were trying to use this mid-jungle power duo, is slowly starting to fall apart. And Mad are getting kills onto the Callista and are actually getting through what should be a pretty difficult early game. Oh man, that is fantastic. 2-0 on Kazi's Callista. Callista Tarek was the combination I was afraid of. I wondered if G2 would have the bravado to let it go through and be like, hey, you beat us with it last time, but we can beat you now. Um, you know, kill the spirit of Mad Lions before it begins. But this is exciting on the Mad Lions side because traditionally they've been the comeback kids. Traditionally they've been the team that's fallen behind and needed to use their, their really good mid and, and late game to come back from deficits. And they find themselves with a kill lead and a minor gold lead. The irony of this situation, Quickshot, is the very first time that these two teams met, the early game was very similar. G2 tried to force a lot of plays that kind of went to disaster, and then um, G2 were able to come back later on into the game. 
The second time that they meant, it was the other way around. G2 had a fantastic early game, and then they faltered in the mid game, and Mad was able to take advantage of it. And the story of these two teams, this split, has been very much whoever gets the early game lead actually ends up struggling more than their opposition. And now we could see Wonder struggling as he is in a one versus three. Yeah, one versus three is Humanoid's going to arrive. Fate's call from Kazi comes out. Wonder's doing a lot to stay alive. May almost have taken down Kaiser, but really showing off his Maokai mechanic. Yeah, uh, he really was. <laughs> there's, a, there's a sentence I just <laughs> felt dirty saying. Like, I, I'm sorry. Viewers at home didn't deserve it. But, you know, he made them work for it. Uh, they don't manage to uh, get the tower just yet, but with the help of Shelly, if they summon it, that should help out. And Caps is pushing bottom lane. Honestly, uh, that just got to showcase the power of Callista when it comes to setting up these dives. The tower reset of the aggro, but Maokai, as you were likely saying, Wonder did everything that he could in that situation. I think he played it as well as he could, and it's unfortunate that Kaiser wasn't slightly closer to the tower, because if he was, he may have actually been able to trade that for a one-for-one. -one. Of course, that wasn't the case. Mad also used the fact that they swapped their bot lane up to top to secure the Herald. They will secure first tower, and now they're going to be ahead in tempo, which means that they can bring their bot lane back towards the bot side of the map if they want to, or they can rotate them into the mid lane. But we just have to acknowledge how well Mad are utilizing this small early game lead that they got from G2's over aggression to snowball this goal lead. They're at a 1k advantage already, and if you saw the Alistair segment, Trevor, G2 on average at 15 have a 2.2k gold lead. So the fact that Mad are doing this in their very first playoff game against G2 is a very impressive start. Well, Vidius, I'm glad you bring up those stats, because I just happen to have a graphic to show you um you're 100% right g2 esports second half of the split their early game strength was fantastic it jumped all the way from plus 415 gold at 15 minutes to plus 2.2k as you mentioned their kills at 15 went from 4.2 to 6.4 the time with the major lead from 30% to 50% it's absolutely fantastic and it's, it's very impressive that Mad has been able to trade blow for blow. But as you know, Vedius, I like my, my stats. And the team that was in the lead at 15 minutes between these two teams lost both of their yep. respective yep. games. Yeah, we were just so talking about that, you right? It's it. the scary you thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we can see that Mad is in a commanding position. They're looking to threaten the bot lane tower. And notice how Humanoid has abandoned farm. And he's just a CC bot right now. He's roaming with his team, looking to set up plays. And I think this is the correct way to play Nautilus mid. The way in which G2 is responding is they're actually funneling a lot of gold onto caps. If we can actually swap over and have a look at the gold between the two teams, we should be able to see that while caps is at a 1k gold deficit, that's of course because he's three kills behind, but he has still completed his Luden's Echo. He's been picking up a lot of the plates, so that deficit could be a lot worse, as it looks like we're getting another fight. We do indeed. Gragas Barrel comes down, but there's two members of Mad Lions caught in a cacophony of G2 Esports. It's an easy two kills for G2. They are now marginally ahead on gold. They picked up that Cloud Drake. They're even on towers, and they're now pushing forward. Caps has completed the Luden's Echo, Blade of the Rune King sitting on perks, so that was just the right time for them to start getting in you know, into the combat. Kazi does have the cleanse, and it looks like he's going to use it to go away. He does indeed, and won't last too long, my friend. Nope. That was a pretty <laughs> easy kill on the yeah. side of G2. Yeah, that was a pretty big mistake from Kazi as well. He thought he was safe because he did have cleanse, but if we look at the minimap, you can see that the bottom side of the map does not belong to Mad Lions. They have that entire river littered with wards, and while they do have some deep vision inside G2's jungle, that was just a big overextension from Kazi after his duo just died in the mid lane. It was Mad who were trying to get a collapse onto G2. It was Mad who were trying to punish G2 for setting up a siege. But then Mad are the ones that end up getting collapsed upon because they messed up their engage. This has now given G2 three very quick kills. And now the kill score is even and G2 have suddenly taken control over the game. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic turnaround. Plus 700 gold. First items completed across the board. Taking a look at the lane assignments. Caps has now moved his way into that mid lane and perks is uh, making his way up top, coming up against the Romate with the Blade of the Rune King and Cullen cooldown. I don't think Perks has got enough just yet to be able to pick up that kill. But nevertheless, he's going to push that wave backwards. 123 CS to the 83 of Humanoid. There's a level advantage as well. 
And that is actually very scary when he's also got a kill and three assists to his name. I think it's really important when, especially we look at tank matchups, to not compare perks to humanoid, but actually look at wonder relative to humanoid and Arome to perks. Because Arome has just been bringing up a lot of free farm, while wonder has been roaming around the map and trying to offer utility while he's also being put under a lot of pressure by mad. Meanwhile, humanoid has been doing the same thing. So I think it makes more sense to kind of compare the tanks and their roles God. and their positions, and you can actually see it's quite even. But even then, Perk still has a pretty big advantage over Arome. It is partly due to the fact that he does have that kill, he's been picking up a lot of plates and a lot of tower farm, and he's likely going to secure this tower as well with the assistance of Yankos, but in terms of utility in the team fights later, you kind of have to look at Maokai and how much more he offers them than Nautilus, because while Humanoid can lock down a single target, Wonder can lock down all of them. With his wide range ultimate and the bashing of the two tanks, it looks like Mad are looking to put more perks down onto the big tree. Yep, Fat Man incoming! That's a flash body slam, the barrel comes out. Nature's grasp will buy a few seconds, and the Malkar passive does so much! The solar flare slows him down! But look at all of those projectiles. The thing is, it's 15 minutes into the game, he's only got a Sunfire cape, and it takes four mad lions to eat the tree. <laughs> yeah, it certainly does, quick shot. That was a very close one, but G2, they're no slouches. They recognize Mad committed four members on the bot side of the map, so they're trying to trade elsewhere on the map. They pushed in mid, they got the tier one, they're also pushing up top, and now they may even be able to trade this for a tier two in the mid lane. So G2, they're gonna call this worth two towers for one. Yes, they lost a kill. Let's see if Humanoid yes. can convert it into anything. No, not just yet. He goes golden. You can see the early game averages for Mad Lions on your screen. A fantastic scat of the week from Caps. But Mad Lions, who traditionally are down 600 gold, rank 6th and 7th for kills and deaths. Thank you, Graphics and Stats Team. Um, for them to be going even with G2 Esports, who've had one of the most dominant early games uh, in the second half of the split, I'm excited. I came into today honestly expecting a quick 3-0. Yeah. I felt that G2 were like super heavy favorites. And I really, really anticipated this game to go the way of, of G2 very quickly. So Mad Lions, kudos for coming out the gate swinging. Now prove you belong here and, you know, play this mid game the way you have all split long. You've beaten G2 already four weeks ago. I wonder if they can do it again. Yeah. Um, oh, it looks like we're going to get another fight. Yeah, we are. Orome goes in with a lot of damage on those cues. Yankos does not manage to connect with the Sonic Wave. Now all of a sudden he's in trouble. Forced to ward hop over the wall. Mad Lions get a cheeky kill onto Mickey and they turn towards the Rift Herald. It's a 5 on 4 Vedius as the siege is being set up. Good hook. It is indeed. The Culling comes down, starting to tag a lot of people. Humoroid flashing for his life. Great solar flare from Kaiser. This is a madness of a fight already. There are so many stacks in the Rift Herald, and it will be taken down. Now all of a sudden, Shadow goes golden. Yankos forced a flash for his life, and now it's Mad Lions on the run. This was a five versus four. Unleashed power will not find the kill, but Perks does. G2, they do trade one for one as Yankos goes down. The Caps won't be able to lob any balls to kill Mad Lions, but they get the Herald and they get out. Yeah, but it's Mad that comes out ahead in this fight, Quick Shot. The fact that they found themselves two kills, they get themselves the Rift Herald and they only lose Kaiser. How can you not be happy with that result? Let's see here. This fight actually starts off with Mickey already dead. G2 want to make sure that they do not give up a second Rift Herald. They don't want to lose that much pressure, but a fantastic ultimate from Kaiser stops G2 dead in their tracks as they're trying to re -engage and a great interrupt there from Shadow on the E. Just as Wonder lands his W, he gets knocked up, and then a great body block from Arome to keep Humanoid alive. Just so many small mechanical excellence here that we're seeing from the Mad Lions squad. It's what you need when playing against G2, because G2 is a team that in these situations rely on their mechanics to outplay you. They will take 50-50 situations and they will turn them into 80-20 because of how good their players are. But if Mad continues to play like like this, they're going to keep going toe-to-toe -to -toe in situations that are not as clear-cut for G2 are going to end up backfiring as we just saw from the Mad Lions. Absolutely the case. Um, one of the, the things that, um, the big stories, the big expectations for this series that, that Yamato and I had, Vidius, was that there's this element of mystery. What can Mad Lions do? Um, expectations for them, very low. You know, hey, the, the expectation is G2's going to stomp this. What level will G2 show us? Will Caps play mages? A lot of these questions are now starting to gain some light. And G2, they're on the hunt. Very good sidestep from Kaiser and Kazi. Scatter the Week won't find a stun. But I am very, very interested to see how these next 10 minutes now play out. And it's, it's, 
it still feels as though G2 are one step ahead, but Mad Lions are not being crushed by that. They are putting up a fight, and they were showing that they can be competitive. I'm kind of thinking about how the rest of this game looks and what these upcoming fights will, will will look like. And I'm trying to think about scaling because we've talked a lot about how G2 should actually have a very strong mid-jungle duo, but they didn't dominate the early game. Mad went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But now when we get into these Drake fights that we're going to be seeing very soon, I think one of the big challenges that G2 is going to have is how do they get on top of Kazi? How do they stop this Kalista from just running wild? Because I think that in straight up front-to-back fights, if G2 is just trying to run at Mad, Kazi is just going to keep kiting them. And when you have a Nautilus, a Gragas, and a Leona, there's so much peel for this champion that I think it's going to be really difficult unless G2 can find a good fight. And look, they're trying to run at them right now. This How is do they insane. close that gap? Vedius, this is insane. G2 tried to make a play for Dragon in the team fight. They end up losing two towers, but they get themselves a kill. They got themselves the Dragon. Mickey escapes with his life. The Dragon Raid kicks, knocks Kai's all the way back. There goes Yankos. He's stunned up, locked up, but not taken down. That's a route onto Kazi. Kazi stays alive for now. He's hopping and skipping and throwing the Rin stacks in. Sonic Wave doesn't find its target. That means Yankos goes down. Kazi continues to run for his life. Uses a stopwatch, but it should just be ornamental now. It ends up being a two for three and kill but Mad Lions got the towers. So the question was, how does G2 get onto Kazi? Well, you just have to run through the front line and you keep running at them and you don't stop. So many flashes were committed from the side of G2 to just get onto Kazi, but you saw how difficult it was. His kite back was beautiful. The fact that he kept just at arm's length and again, look at how hard G2 tried to collapse. First, it's a three versus five. A good ultimate from Wanda locks up two members, but then all this crowd control is body blocking. I like this ultimate from Mickey because it splits up mad. Half are dealing with Mickey while the other two are dealing with the front line of Putux and Yankos as they just melt through it. But here, Kazi gets caught up in a choke point. A great W from Wanda is able to sidestep Kaiser and this provides the initial CC that allows them to start the chase. But again, look at him! He's just kiting backwards. Unreal. Wanda has to commit his flash as well and you can see how difficult it's going to be to actually shut him down. Yes, this was a one team fight for G2 but you talked about it quick shot. Mad got themselves two towers off the back of this and I don't think that these fights are going to be as straightforward as that because those flash cooldowns are going to be so important if G2 want to try and win these fights otherwise and... Kazi's just going to have free reign over this. Kazi's flash is about to become off cooldown. He picked up a GA uh, as well as Runan's Hurricane so he's got those two for the next fight. Shadow on that Gragas has got the Hourglass available. His flash is not there but he's three zero and three. Mad Lions, 500 goal up. They've got a kill ahead of G2, a tower ahead of G2 at 21 minutes. And we had a fantastic game on our hands. You were talking about the later stages and how the front and back team fights are going to play out. But is there a clear cut winner in sort of, sort of scaling? Like, do you prefer uh, Mad or G2's comp? Uh, it's tough, isn't it? Because they're quite yeah. unconventional. I think Mads outscales when I look at it, because I think Gragas offers a lot more in terms of utility later on into the game. While I do think Maokai can do a lot, the thing you've got to think about for Maokai is he's a great setup champion. So he sets someone up to then swing the bat, right? And I'm looking at G2's comp and I'm thinking, okay, who exactly is he trying to set up? Because the problem that G2's champs have is that if Lucian tries to go in, there's a lot of crowd control on the side of Mad. So he may end up just getting CC'd the moment he tries to close the gap. Meanwhile, Syndra, she's pretty short range too. She kind of just has to kill what's in front of her. So if she's forced to use her ultimate on a humanoid or a Kaiser, Mad don't really care. As long as Arome and Kazi are still alive, Mad is always going to have more than enough damage to clean up these fights. So I think right now when I look at things, I think Mad's comp is easier to execute. I think that it's um, easier for them to play around objectives. And I also think that they just offer a lot more in terms of late game comp. So I think Mad do have the scaling oh. advantage. They look for another fight. Oh, they're going in. Arome's teleported cats. in from behind. Mickey's late to the fight. This is a four on four. Shadow keeps him out for now. That's one already. Kazi's looking for another. Kaiser stays alive. Kazi's going to continue to chase. He's got himself a double kill. Mad are doing it. Mad are in the lead. They are playing the game right. And they are 
punishing G2 Esports, they're going to get themselves an uncontested Baron and absolute control in game one of the series. What a beautiful flank for Marome. The synergy that they had to just shut down Caps was flawless. When we jump into the replay, I just want you to keep your eyes on how Arome comes into the back line and how Mad's goal is just kill Caps. With him gone, the rest of the dominoes will very quickly fall. And it just becomes like blowing down a deck of cards, a tower of cards. Again, keep your eyes on this TP just to the left hand side. Comes in from the flank, the Normless ultimate hits the Syndra. And what you're gonna do, Yankos is trying to provide peel, Perks has no one that he can hit, and then Kazi is just flashing into the front of them. Meanwhile, Mickey's getting zoned off by Shadow. We talked about how this comp is just easier to execute for Mad, and that's a prime example of how to do it. Fantastic teamwork from Mad to just rip apart G2. They've now got the Baron. This game is fully in their control. Unbelievable performance I think they're gonna do it I just when you look at a game and you look at how a team is playing mad have earned this lead. they have moved around the map effectively they have won the team fights effectively I'm gonna ignore the fact that Kaiser is in trouble for now will not be caught out just here Kazi no is fates he? call available just what on earth that damage was fantastic Kaiser goes down but he takes two with him now wonders in trouble He's going to chase onto Shadow, but he will get rendered into oblivion. I did not think that the turnaround was going to play out the way that it did. Humanoid is now getting some chunk onto Mickey as there's another dragon available. But Mad have earned every single piece of gold in the advantage. And they are simply outplaying G2 in the opening game this match. It was talked about at the beginning of the day. Mad is a team that when the odds are completely against them, they shine the most. This team is the only team in the entirety of the LEC to beat all of the top three teams at least once this split. And of course, G2, technically they can't beat themselves, so they kind of don't qualify for that <laughs> role. But you have to acknowledge the fact that Mad has done something that very few teams can claim credit to. The fact that they've been able to take those games off those top teams, many people would sit there and say, oh, it was lucky. Oh, G2 misplayed. Uh, Origin had a bad draft. Uh, Fnatic mis-executed. Like, maybe, but... Mad also do all the right things. When Mad have an opportunity, they are not afraid to take you by the arm and take the entire body with it. This team continues to impress and they're doing it now. Now, of course, quick shot, this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Correct. There's five games, it's a best of five rather, they've got to win at least three, and right now they look poised and ready to win the first one. But that doesn't mean that they're suddenly favorites to win the series. G2 have fallen down before, but again, that's assuming G2 lose. Right? Yes. We've seen them come back from yes. situations like this before in a game that they shouldn't be able to win. It only takes one big mistake from Mad for them to suddenly reclaim control. So is, let's see how Mad push with the lead that they currently have. I don't feel like this is the game that's going to happen. Um, just on those 25 minutes of gameplay, look, I agree with everything you said. And the expectation is still that G2 can bounce back. When you look at those five players on your screen, the Mad Lion squad has been... A little maybe underrated. They quietly moved their way into fourth place. For sure, they, yeah. They had a strong second half of the split. Those five players, none of them are true superstars yet. We've seen superstar moments. You know, Kaiser, Humanoid, Shadow, Kazia, Arome. They've had good standout games from time to time. But you would have expected pound for pound to be outclassed by G2. The thing that yep. makes Mad impressive is as a young rookie team, they play as a team. They work as a team. And their mid-game has been fantastic. We call them the comeback kids because they played and, and picked up wins from behind all split long. Now they've been ahead. Now they're pushing into the base. They've already got a gigantic advantage over G2. Mickey's diving the back line, but it simply doesn't matter, dude. Arome is keeping four members of G2 busy. Kaze throws in Kaiser, and he's already used that solar flare. That's a trade back. This is starting to turn a little in G2's favor, but that's a defensive flash, and Humanoid cannot find the Gragas barrel. But the inhibitor will go down. It's a 4,000 gold lead, six kill lead. And this rookie squad is making a statement in their debut playoff Ooh, TP game. TP flank. I think this ends badly for G2, though. Take a look at this. Humanoid starts to turn around. TP flank again. This time, Arome. He's coming in for the hunt. Follow Kazi. Bottom right of your screen. He's hunting on Caps. Manages to get the pierce. Manages to get the rent. Caps is trying to hover away to safety. Will buy some time. Flash is available. Needs to flash towards the pit. Scatter the weak. Will need to connect. 
Luden's Echo gets a small proc in G2. They've managed to surround Mad Lion. The Scatter the Weak did not hit. And therefore, Mad Lions are escaping for now. Humanoid manages to get a shield. Won't be able to escape. The GA is going to get proc. Now Yankos goes down. Mad Lions are forced backwards. They've been chased from inhibitor to inhibitor. Pole to pole. Caps throws out the Unleashed Power and Shadow dodges it with the Hourglass. All of a sudden, Caps goes down. Now Wonder's running away. Cue the Benny Hill music because we're <laughs> going to running. Oh man, what a crazy fight. <laughs> it looks like they might not even be over yet. Wonder is doing everything that he can to try and escape. <laughs> oh my word, it's still going. Wonder, come on, Sap Magic. Sap Magic again, I'm sure you can get it. Gonna dash forward, still alive. get the purple bash. <laughs> Snap Magic, he does it again. Come on! Oh man, his bark truly is bigger than his bites. Oh, that was a good joke. I'm impressed with that one. <laughs> Thank really you. Good. I'll take that one. I'll All take right, that so one. All right, so let's let's try and break down this replay. So this is the end good luck. of the fight, where it ended up being a one for one trade of supports. Mad are trying to walk away with a an inhibitor taken, but then we see the TP flanks come in from Wonder and Caps. They tried to just get a quick pick onto Kazi, but the problem is they realize they can't win that two v two, so they have to wait for Yankees and Pokes to arrive. Of course, they're very far behind, so this forces Caps to take the long way around. He has to use his QE to keep Arome at arm's length. And now you're like, Matt, do you go for caps or do you try and disengage? If Humanoid landed that hook, he was going to die. So the fact that he missed it was actually much better for him. And it looks at this point, the G2 is just going to get a huge team fight win. They're going to get back into the game. But look at this flash body slam from Yang uh, Shadow. Helps get the double kill for his team. And then with a good flash from Kazi, now Mad can look to uh, restart the fight. Of course, with all of this chasing happening, the Baron does end up being respawned allowing Mad to secure this one very quickly. And uh, yeah, it should just be an easy cleanup from here. It's cool to see G2 not really giving up. They're still trying to find these flank fights. They're still trying to find opportunities back into the game, but Mad just have so much more of an advantage. They are far too strong. And Kazi has 10 kills. Quick shot, he's level 16. Like, so much debate has been Dude. around rookie of the split, right? You know, and Kazi's been a player that you have to question, you know, ha does he deserve it? He's been quite quiet, honestly, on the side of Mad. I don't think, like, he's been... You know, he doesn't make that same splash that many other AD carries have, yeah. but he's very yeah. reliable. He's very consistent. consistent. And the, the one thing you can say for certain is that Kalista, in his hands, definitely Terrifying. one of his best champions. Dude, look at Arome and Shadow. 507, 608. There are 33 kills in this game. Arome's been involved in 12. Shadow's been involved in 14. And they have been very chaotic kills and team fights and craziness. And they haven't conceded a death. This is phenomenal uh, performance from Mad Lions. I, I have to go back to the draft. Syndra first pick for Caps, 2, 3, yep. and 6. Lucian thrown into the mid lane for Perks, 5, 5, and 5. And that last pick, Ali Oop, the Nautilus and the Leona from Mad Lions. Yep. Max said it in the interview, we want to play our game, we mm -hmm. want to play our way. They got their draft. By God, is it good to watch. Yeah, quick shot. I think you hit the nail on the head. It was funny because when we see this Nautilus locked in, you don't sit there and go, oh yeah, that's definitely a comfort pick for Humanoid, right? That's not where your brain goes to, but the high priority on the Callista is definitely paying off as this looks like this could be the last fight of the game. It is, and like, I mean, um, Perk said it. You know, he wanted the Assassin versus Assassin matchup, and Humanoid, he's thrown out that depth charge. There's a little bit of trouble. He's running for his life. The culling does nothing. Absolutely nothing. Shadow gets a fantastic barrel. Mickey's diving all the way to the back line. He's trying to put pressure on Humanoid, but he's taken out by Shadow. Now all of a sudden, Kaiser's running for his life. Arome's done so much to zone the rest of G2. Arome has zoned G2 Esports into another dimension this game. They are running for their lives. The Humanoids TP back in. Inhibitor number two. Inhibitor number three. Super minions are the Nexus turrets. Vedius, what is the one saying play-by-plays love to say when a series gets exciting? Ladies, looks, gentlemen, and everyone. It looks like we got a series on our hands, but the game isn't <laughs> over yet. Quick shot. Flash in from G2. Uh, my friend, the game is over. Mad Lions are doing it. Hashtag mad win. Are they? Damn it, damn it, damn it. Come on, Kazi. Make this work. Get a bunch of rends in. The hurricane is doing a lot. The rend will get dodged away from for now. Manages to push back. Not going to get any kills. The shield comes up. 
Okay, that that was my fault. My bad. I'll, that I'll is take four people dead. Quick I'll take shot. That, that is that's, four that's members of Mad Lions yep. dead. That is so much gold that G2 just picked up. Let's have a switch over to the gold. Let's see how much they're currently sitting on. 3,000 oh. for perks. He just went up to 15k gold. Caps is sitting at 16,000 total. He has 2.3k to spend. Like, that kind of money is not just, you know, that's, that's not nothing. That's like completed items. Quick shot. Mad just gave away a huge advantage. They lost their Baron. It's not going to be alive for two and a half minutes. G2 will gain a lot of experience off the back of that. And the thing you got to note is, these fights have actually been getting closer. G2 seem to be learning ways in which they can navigate around Mad's stronger team fight comp. And they've actually only been training one for one, maybe two for one. And this was the opportunity for Mad to actually win it all. But then they greeted. They overcommitted. They succumbed to the glory. They fell the same trap you did. Quick shot. They thought it was done, <laughs> dusted over. Over, and then they took one step too far and then the kings of Europe snapped back now suddenly the game is a lot more tense and of course Matt still in full control expectations are they're still gonna win this game one single team fight isn't enough to suddenly swing the game on its head Kazi is still full build he's level 17 but when you look across the items when you look across the board G2 is a lot closer now than they were before they are unleashed power comes down doesn't pick up the shadow Mad Lions are on Soul Point in uh, the Ocean Drake is spawning in 90 seconds. Humanoid will clear out this ward and start to step forward. It's Mad Lions with a 4,000 gold lead. They got the item advantage. GA is available for Arome and Kazi. And uh, the flashes are available too. Let's take a look how this final push is going to play out. I like this. They don't need to force around Dragon. I like that Mad Lions are pushing themselves into the base. They are looking for the Nexus. This could be the final fight. Perks is not here just yet. Arome goes in. Caps is in trouble. The Nature's Cross comes down. It's not going to be enough to dissuade. The Death Charge flies out from Humanoid. And the Culling, it barely scratches Mad Lion's HP bars. Humanoid buys some time. And that was fantastic. Fate's Call will push G2 back to the Nexus. Arome gets popped with the GA. Is this going to be turned in G2's favor? No! The Zenith Blade manages to find a stun. Wonder's going to start to get a bunch of chunks into him. The Ren is going to do so much damage. It pops. It kills. It's G2 down. It's G2 defeated. And Mad Lions, the rookies, the team that was picked by G2 Esports, strikes first in the Spring Playoffs. Impressive stuff coming out from Mad Lions, and we got to go back to the early game, right? When we looked at the draft, when we looked at what to expect, it was going to be about G2 dominance, using that strong mid-jungle duo to try and force plays. They also had a strong 2v2 bot. They could have looked for some fights. But the early game, skirmishing did not go in G2's favor. Mad Lions were in control. And the moment they got that slight lead, they moved around the map extremely quickly. They took top tower, they took bot tower, they kept getting kills, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with G2, and you could see how with their comp, it was getting harder and harder for G2 to actually win out on these fights, while Kazi was just getting stronger and stronger. And even though G2 did get a huge fight in the enemy base, Mad Lions didn't back off, Mad Lions didn't just suddenly retreat, they didn't start playing scared, they went straight back to the base and said, okay, we messed up, we misexecuted, but I still think we can win, and I Fantastic. think that they did a great job. Fantastic. Mad Lions earned that victory. They fought for it. They played well. And after the break, the expert will give you all the takeaways from the upset victory. There will be more playoffs action tomorrow. Don't forget Fnatic and Origin will be hitting the rift. The winner of that series plays the winner of this series. We're back with more G2 Mad after this. We probably have the edge because I think in best of fives it's a lot about actually not playing by the book. Fnatic are better in 2020 there than they were in 2019. Cool down is your tip sniper with the one shot comes out. Oh my god! El Fari with the one, two, three! Fari isn't just winning, he's dominating. Best of fives against Fnatic are always really close. They always have really good players on their roster. You have to be on top of your game to beat them. I don't think the play styles are going to decide the match. It's about who plays better. 